take your Bible and let's look up what the Bible has to say about murder. Now, as you turn to Genesis chapter 4, I'm going to give you Webster's 1828 Dictionary. And those watching the video, again, I'm sorry with Facebook, you can't see. You can follow along. An act of unlawfully killing a human being with premeditated malice by a person of sound mind to constitute murder in law. The person killing another must be of sound mind or possession of reason. The act must be done with malice prevents, afterthought or premeditated, but malice may be implied as well as expressed. In Genesis 4, 8, we find the first murder in the Bible. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were slain, they when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Now verse 11, God speaking, Now art thou cursed from the earth, which has opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. There are four people. One quarter of the world was killed. A religionist and a man under the blood. The first murder in the Bible is a man of religion of work killing a man that's under the blood. Now in 2021 There were 10,335 males incarcerated for murder. There were 1,400 females. And then funny, 4,500 unknown. How stupid. In 2018, the juvenile population, 2018, 920 for murder. Females were 11 and under 15 years old was 10. Genesis 9 before the law. There's no law in Genesis 9. This is God talking, talking to Noah. But the flesh with the light thereof which is in the blood thereof. God said life is in the blood. Shall ye not eat? That's before the law. So that to your Catholic mass. And surely your blood of your lives will I require. At the hand of every beast will I require it. At the hand of every man. At the hand of every man's brother will I acquire the life of man. Whoso, whoso sheddeth man's blood before the law, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. Now look at verse 5. God speaking to Noah and said, Listen, if an animal sheds man's blood, that animal is accountable. If a man sheds another man's blood, that man is accountable. And in verse 6, capital punishment. Whoso is shed in man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. It's not a popular subject in the prison system. I tried it twice. They get mad at you. But I realize that those get very angry with the truth. Especially those who are profession Christians get very mad at the truth. Let's jump all the way to the New Testament. You thought I was going to run to the law. Acts 20, 25. Acts 25. New Testament on this side of Calvary. Acts 25, 11. Verse 10 is Paul speaking. Verse 10, 
Uh, verse 11. For if I be offender, or have committed anything worthy of death, capital punishment, I refuse not to die. And I read that to prison with all the men that were upset with me about the message about capital punishment. I said, Paul, Paul says, if I'm guilty, and one man got up and said, well, Paul wasn't guilty. Yes, he was. Before Paul became Paul, he was saw killing Christians. That was a man who was guilty of, of a crime of murder. Say, hey, listen. By God's mercy and grace, Moses killed a man. Romans 13, Church Age Epistles. Romans 13, which many, many Christians don't like today. But Romans 13, we're not going to get into that. Verse 4. For he's a minister of God. Verse 1, higher powers. Verse 2, the power. Verse 3, the rulers. For he's a minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, break the law, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. God, through Paul the Holy Spirit, says as far as the government, on the church aid side of Calvary, God has given the powers of rulers, the ministering powers, the ordained powers, verse 1. The power of God for the government is to outright, as we read in Noah, a murderer is to be put to death. Before the law, in the church age, Friend, America can't say God bless the USA. In God we trust. When in 2021 there were over 15,000 men and women I don't do unknown who are in prison guilty of murder. And add another 920 in 2018 for juveniles. Oh, you're not supposed to kill the kids. Oh. The law prescribed if a child were to curse his parents. If he were to smite his parents, there was capital punishment. Just because you don't like it. God didn't ask what you like. The law is severe. The law has no mercy and grace. Before the law and after the law, there is a charge of murder and you are found guilty. The power of ordained government by God, the ministers thereof, are ordered by God before the law during the church age epistles, those people who have committed a murder ought not to be lit. Now, you got to be found guilty. I would say give them a minimum of two trials. A trial, a retrial, maybe three. But if then if they are found murder, they are found guilty of murder. And I've met a couple people in prison ministry they killed somebody. Now there's a difference between homicide and outright murder. There's a difference when you're driving down the road and a kid runs out in front of you and gets smacked by a car. And maybe we'll talk about that in another time. But in an act of premeditated malice, we'll look at that more, 
You had plans and you had motive. That the person that is dead by your fingertips or your lips. And the Catholic Church will get their people at an execution site and the whole sign, and he ought not to die, he ought not to die. And you need to read Fox's Book of Martyrs for all the Christian, Bible believing Christians, blood washed Christians that the Catholic Church killed. Fox's Book of Martyrs, the king. You know, if we were to take the charge as what God said, the Catholic Church would not be here today because the Catholic Church, they're murderers. Numbers. 35, I hope. My writing is so terrible. Numbers. I hope there's 35. 35, 16. Good. Numbers 35 16. And if he smite him with an instrument of iron, so that he die, you pick up a sword, you pick up a weapon, a metal bar. We just had a guy die here at Daytona Beach the other day. Something about a bicycle chain. He is a murderer, number 3516, the murderer shall surely, surely be put to death. That doesn't happen in America. Oh, that's under the law. No, we read it before the law, and we read it in the church age, and we seen the Apostle Paul say, hey, I refuse not to die. If he smite him with a throwing a stone, whereby he died, and he died, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely put to death. So take it, he's got a stone, and the purpose is I am going to do damage. I'm going to do harm. Hope to kill you. Or if he smite him with a handle, excuse me, with a hand of a weapon of wood. A gun is made of iron and wood. Whereby he may die. And he died. He's a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. He's been found guilty. Guilty that a man or woman has taken another man, another woman's life purposely and of a right sound mind. I don't care what the intent is. I don't care what if on purpose you take someone's life. You say, well, Brother Stiley, you know, you don't understand, you know, my husband or my dad was raping me and stuff like that, and nobody would do anything about it. And I'm going to say I'm sorry, but you're going to take your arguments with God. Well, you know, the law didn't help me. Well, that's your American system. That's that's the nation, one, one nation under God. You've got politicians involved with, with sex and, and sports figures, and, and they get off. We're not talking about that, but God will deal with them one day. Deuteronomy 19. I'm telling you, if you have murdered somebody, you have premeditated killing somebody, and you are living, and you are guilty, and you are a right sound mind, and you premed, you ought not to be li living. Now, 
Now by the mercy and grace of God, but what's the scripture say? Now remind you again, Moses and Paul murdered. And God used them. You're on me 1911. I'm not, I'm not in God's stead. But if any man hate his neighbor and lie in wait for him, you, you've got a plan. You're going to get him. And rise up against him, the neighbor, and smite him mortally, death, mortuary, that he died. If you flee to one of these cities, the city of the refuge, we're not going to talk about that. So you murder somebody, and you run to the court. Because you know the court, if found guilty, they will give you a life sentence without parole in jail. Then the elders of his city shall send and fetch him thence, and deliver him to the hand of the avenger of blood, that he may die. That I shall not pity him, but thou shalt put away the guilt of innocent blood from Israel, that it may be go well with thee. Well, he has a bad mind. He comes from... God said, you're not to pity him. Remember, justice is supposed to be blind. That's just a child. Justice is supposed to be blind. The only ones that do the peaking is the news media. And the news media will peak for, for some and they won't peak for some. Exodus 21. Exodus 21. 12. He that smiteth a man, so that he die, shall be surely put to death. You know, we went out drinking, we had a good old party, and the bar broke out, and we got into fists because we were intoxicated, and I punched him, and he died. So do you. I don't know why people in the prison would hate this message. Exodus 20, verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. Now we're going to deal with the Jehovah Witnesses, Lord willing, another time. Thou shalt not kill. Why don't they want the Ten Commandments in the courtroom? There's a great verse, Exodus 20, verse 13, to put in the execution chambers. By the way, you know Egypt, type of the world. You know China, mean, nasty, wicked China. Do you know Syria? Egypt, China, and Syria allow the death penalty for murderers. America will put people to death here and there. There's a couple states they will put people to death, but not the 50 states. 
And when God says the murderer shall be put to death, the governors and the legislation and the senators and the House of Republican, I mean the House of uh, Representative and the President of the United States is going to have to answer before God Almighty one day. How come, as a nation under God, you didn't listen to my scriptures? Why did you feed that guy 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70 years? Why did you feed that guy when my scriptures say, Thou shalt not pity him. Thou shalt kill him. Thou shall not kill. Did you get that? Well, I don't think you got it. Deuteronomy. I don't think you got that. Deuteronomy chapter 5. Verse 17. I don't think you got it. Deuteronomy 5, 17. Ready? Thou shall not kill. Did you get that? Never mind what the Jehovah Witnesses say again. We will deal with that, Lord willing, another time. But have you got the point? You see, we got thou shalt not commit adultery. We got that down pat. Did you know in the Bible adultery was a capital punishment offense by God? In past years in America, adultery was a criminal act against the laws of this nation. Not anymore. But we're not talking about adultery. We're talking about killing somebody. We are in a day of age today that gun violence has killed many. We are in a day and age of 2021 on the streets and in the buildings of places in America people are being killed. But I don't think you got that. So let's go over to Matthew. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 21. Oh! Oh no! Matthew 5, 21. Oh, oh look at that! It's red lettering. It is means that the Lord Jesus Christ. Ye have heard that it has been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill. Gee, I wonder where that was said. It was said in Deuteronomy, it was said in Exodus. Have we got the point? Well, you know, you know, so we're in the church age. We're under grace. We're not under the law. For women shall not wear what pertains to a man, and a man shall not pertain what wears to a woman, and, and thou shalt not print marks on your body. That's under the law, too. But Romans. <laughs> I'll stop going to Romans, will you? Romans chapter 3, verse. Oh, that 3 or 13. All right, Romans 13. 9, I think. All right, Romans 13, 9. You ready? Church epistle. For this. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. There it is. We're not saved by the law. But there are some points in the law we are to obey as Christians. One of them is Thou shalt not kill. Well, you know, can you be a, 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 a saved Christian and kill somebody? Yes, but you ought not to. Well, what happens, you know, if you're a Christian and you, you kill somebody? You ought to put yourself at the mercy of the court. And the court is supposed to execute you. 
But there are exceptions to the rules. Again, Moses, that wasn't even under the law, but God told Noah. And then the Apostle Paul. Romans 1. 29. Be filled with unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full and envy. Like imagine, think of a neighborhood. And in the neighborhood of Street, Romans 1.29. Here are the people that live in the neighborhood. Fornication, wickedness, covetousness, malicious. That sounds like your average American street. Full of envy. Murder. Rest, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backfire, haters of God. Look at that. Despiteful, proud. There's America. Bolsters, inventors of evil things. This will be the parents without understanding. Murder does not make in a list of, of verbs. That's not a very good list for a Christian. Now, can a Christian murder? Yeah, he can murder. He ain't going to lose his salvation, but that's not, it's not good. Galatians. Another church age epistle. Galatians, chapter 5, verse 21. But we'll start in 519. Ready? Again, think of think of a street. This one will be a road. Galatians 519, 21. And on Galatians chapter 5, 19, 20. These are the, the houses. These are the residents of Galatians 519 to 21. The works of the flesh, adultery, that's not good, fornication, that's not, that's America, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envy, murder, there it is again, drunkenness. That list sounds like America. That list sounds like a world. That list is the works of the flesh. That's not through the Spirit, verse 22 and 23. Murder is not a work of God. It's a work of sin, it's a work of the world, and it's a work of the flesh. And yes, a Christian can murder, and he won't lose his salvation, but it's not very good. It's ranked right up there with adultery. 1 Timothy 1 9. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient. I don't have to worry if a police car pulls up. Unless they're going to twist the law. I've done nothing wrong. I've done nothing illegal. For the ungodly and for the sinners. For the unholy. I'm a sinner. The law showed me who I am. I'm a sinner. Un unholy and profane. Murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers. For manslayers. Well, look what murderers is. It's lawless, disobedient, ungodly, sinners, unholy, profane. Verse 10, defile themselves. That's not a very good list to be in. And murder is one of the top. All right. You feel safe, don't you? First John three fifteen. 
You said, I, I've never killed anybody. Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Why does he have eternal life? Because a murderer is supposed to die in the church age also. You hate anybody? Have you ever thought evil of somebody? You ever thought a revenge? I'll get even. You ever use the expression <coughs> drop dead? You're a murderer. Numbers. Back to numbers. 35. Number 35, 31. Moreover, ye shall take no satisfaction for the life of murder. He's young. He's old. He's poor. God says, yes, so. Before you execute him, you give him the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if he gets saved, he will be executed. And he'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. And if he rejects Jesus Christ, he will be executed, he will die, and he'll wake up in hell. Moreover, you shall take no satisfaction for the life of a murderer, which is guilty of death. But ye shall surely put to death. Capital punishment is a biblical ground as much as creation thirty three number thirty five thirty three so ye shall not pollute the land where ye are for the blood it defileth the land someone's been slain murdered the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that sheddeth it. Oh, you see, there you go, Sally. That's the law and Israel, verse 34. Okay. True. Absolutely true. Genesis before the law. And we're right back to where we started. If that is just for the land of Israel. Verse 10. Genesis 4.10. And he said, God said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cries unto me from the ground. That's not Israel. That's not under the law. So when you want to say, God bless America, one nation under God, America the beautiful, how much blood of people who have been murdered cries out to God and says, God, why is that guy living in prison getting free food? Does not your scripture say you ought to execute him? I got another scripture here. Look at this one. This one I have to look up. I'm going to search it. About this one. Revelation 20, verse 4. And we're done. I saw thrones. They that sat upon them. Judgment was given unto them. 
I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. They've been murdered by the Antichrist. For the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark on their foreheads, in their head, hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And there's another place. Revelation 6.10. Oh. oh, wait a minute. Romans, uh, Revelation 6.10. And they cried with a loud voice. I saw under the altar souls of them been slain for the word of God. Revelation 6 9. They cried with the verse 6 10. O Lord, holy and true, does not now judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth. There have been people who have been murdered, and the blood cries out to Jesus, Hey! What are they still doing living? And this is worldwide, but America, United States, God bless America. And from the ground of the 50 states, God, I was killed. And the person that killed me is still living. When are you going to avenge? my blood and you're going to think that God's going to bless America when murderers sit in prison guilty and we just read the scriptures say they ought not to be living that's the scriptures you don't like it have I become your enemy because I told you the truth? 